Arts here, and today I'm going to be talking about the five most important art books for painters who like to paint with thick paint. The first book of five, and by far the most valuable, is this one right here. It's Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting by John F. Carlson. It has a nice um, painting on the cover. Unfortunately, inside it is black and white, but I've never found that really uh, any detriment to uh, this book, really. But the information here is really, really good. Um, you can see here I've marked the pages. I've written in the margins here. Uh, you cannot make any composition work. Start with a good composition. Just a reminder to you know, put my best foot forward with composition. Now, here's a good chapter on trees. Um, a lot of the ideas I've, I have in my blogs on trees uh, come from this chapter. So, uh, do yourself a favor and get this book and, uh, and use it. Uh, although it doesn't have anything specifically about thick paint, everything in here is applicable. Book number two is uh, Van Gogh by D.M. Field. And there are a lot of books out there on Van Gogh, so you have to be kind of careful. This one tends toward the high chroma a little bit. I have another book on Van Gogh that is really quite good, but I got this one because it's probably the least expensive. And um, even though um, some of the reproductions are a little bit off, they're, they're not bad. In, um, I think it was around 1993, I went to the Metropolitan Museum in New York City and saw an exhibit of Van Gogh's work and was really blown away. And that was kind of the beginning of a lot of my fascination with thick paint. His background, or at least some of his influence, was the woodcut. You can see here some of his concepts of cloisonne, the outlining of forms, which, which I don't use, but uh, evolved directly from his observation of uh, uh, Japanese woodcuts. Now it's with a bit of reluctance I introduced this next book, but um, because this book will not be for everybody, but it is What Painting Is by James Elkins. And um, it's an interesting book in that it's primarily all writing. There's some illustrations here and there. There's some very nice, uh, very beautiful uh, close-ups of paintings, which uh, I think painters in thick paint will find very interesting. Um, but uh, a little bit arcane here and there with the writing because he talks about how uh, alchemy is a bit like painting and uh, here's a, here's a, a close-up, uh, an extreme close-up of a painting by Monet and um, this was a bit of an eye-opener for me because I could see that you know he obviously let the paint dry. I sort of had the idea that Monet painted a la prima and uh, that's certainly not the case so uh, you can see, you know, dry little scumbles here and there. Quite fascinating. And how he's built up the texture underneath and then used that texture to, to scumble over the top. Or uh, use dry brush, little flecks of dry brush to, to model the form. It's quite fascinating. But generally speaking, um, I just skip over the really uh, obtuse parts about, um, about uh, alchemy because it, it does get bogged down a little bit. But the, the good parts in this book are just so great for uh, painters. You may want to consider this one. Like I say, it's not for everybody. But uh, if you're, if you're uh, struggling with thick paint or you really love thick paint and you want to get a little insight into um, how some other painters, you can see on the cover is Rembrandt. What a fantastic painter. What, a, what an incredible use of, of uh, texture. Here's another book that I just really love, and I mean you can tell by the, the cover that this book will probably have a lot of paintings with very thick impressionist strokes, and um, you know if you get up close you can see that uh, texture that they've that this artist has put in. A lot of the painters in this uh, book are lesser known artists, <clears throat> but the Russians for some reason really 
like to uh, put on a lot of thick paint and um, you can you can see how they did it in this in this tone here this is Igor Grabar and um, you can just practically feel the texture by looking at that that's just gorgeous now here's a here's a piece that um, it's probably you know thinner applications, but it still has very you know beautiful strokes and very beautiful uh, apparent texture. So as we've talked about in the past, uh, not really concerned about whether it's the illusion of texture in thick paint or if it's actually painted in. But this is one of those beautiful books that um, is is a plus. Can be a plus. Now I don't mean to uh, be derogatory to any of the painters, but sometimes uh, the painters aren't of equal ability. And that's quite useful because uh, it's a little bit easier to see how a lesser painter might have painted uh, with thick paint. In other words, you can kind of see some of the techniques a little bit easier. The really, the really amazing, fantastic painters tend to be uh, sort of ma magicians, and you just have no idea what they're doing. It's just impossible to decipher. But uh, you can see there's a nice, a nice blend of impressionist paintings, some more expressionistic types. Now, another really great volume is this book entitled The Group of Seven and Tom Thompson by David P. Silcox. And it is just a treasure trove in thick paint. Sometimes it's a little hard to see how thick the paint is in, in the video, but um, there is just some, some gorgeous paint and great design. Now, now, not all of these painters in The Group of Seven painted with a lot of... Uh, texture um, but this is AJ Casson and um, his paint his paintings seem to be a little bit thinner but uh, here's Lauren Harris who used some fine strokes but one of the things that kind of unifies the group of seven is the use of really really fantastic composition and um, it's it's almost uniform throughout their work. Now Lauren Harris began to really become almost abstract in some of his compositions, but uh, I, I love his work. We'll take a look at that sky. I mean that is just uh, an amazing application of of thick swirling paint. Just really beautiful. With little bits of orange peeking out. Really quite fascinating. So I keep these books handy and I've learned a lot about painting from them and they're books that I've constantly gone back to over the years. This is Tom Thompson right here. There's some beautiful paint in these paintings. This is Tom Thompson again. Well, those are just a few of the resources that I use over the years, but they've been some of the best for me and some of the most productive to review and, and learn from. If you have any additional uh, suggestions, I'd, I'd love to hear about them, so I hope you'll add your comments below. Thanks. Mm -hmm.